Once I was seven years old, my mama told me, go make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. <laughs> Those lyrics are from the Danish singer Lucas Graham's number one hit song here in the US. And I'm a lucky guy because my predecessors didn't wait for this song to be released before they actually followed this advice. And therefore, I'm so privileged and, and happy to be here tonight, surrounded by friends from the Nordic countries, but first and foremost, you, Mr. President, and your fantastic and dedicated wife, Michelle, and all of your fellow Americans. The United States is truly one of Denmark's closest friends. The first time you invited me into the Oval Office, Mr. President, you said that Denmark is punching above our weight. It made me proud. It made our stains feel a little special. Now, some six years later, I understand that not only Denmark, but all the Nordic countries punch above our weight. Um, but nevertheless, I, I'm still proud. And I truly believe the same goes for my colleagues. So you can count on us, and you know that. And, and that's probably why we are all invited here tonight, because we punch above our weight. And we will continue to do so. And after tonight's splendid dinner, we will definitely step up into a whole new weight class. <laughs> the ties between the United States and the Nordics are strong and go way back. As you said, Nordic Vikings crossed the Atlantic centuries ago and discovered amazing America. And ever since, millions have, and ever since, um, millions left our rainy and windy countries, looking for a new start in America. Many of them settled in uh, Minnesota. Uh, I guess the weather there made them feel right at home. And. The Nordic settlers uh, took part in making America bright and, and beautiful. Scarlett Johansson of Danish descent is just a living proof of, of that. And the Swedes and the Finns and the Icelanders did their part too, contributing to the gene pool that gave you Julia Roberts, Matt Damon and Uma Thurman. And the Norwegians, well, they gave you Karl Rowe. Uh, among many other things. So I guess it's true to say that we have had a certain impact on America in, in many different ways. So the good question is, can we Nordics still contribute to America? And the answer is as simple as it is famous. Yes, we can. <laughs> Nordic architects like Bjarke Ingels contribute to transforming American cities with projects like the New York Dry Line and the redesign of the Smithsonian here in Washington based on a vision uh, of making urban areas more livable, smart and sustainable. Both the US and the Nordic countries try to set positive standards for the world of tomorrow, taking the lead, so to speak. And speaking of taking the lead, speaking of leadership, it is easy to see the importance and value of your leadership, Mr. President. So without interfering in American politics, I can truly and without a doubt say that you have been the best president Europe never had. <laughs> now your presidency is coming to an end and I have something to admit. I'm very fond of uh, Donald, too. Uh, I support him as a president. He's really smart, 
shows great leadership skills, a true visionary, and I'm of course talking about Donald Tusk, uh, our Polish president of the European Council, which in your absence is the best president you could have. Well, being a role model is not always easy, so I've heard, but, but you, Mr. President, have come to uh, represent a dream for millions of Americans and people across the world. We share a common vision of securing good, affordable health care to all, and I greatly respect your achievement in this regard. Your leadership was also key to the Paris Agreement on climate change last year, and, and we continue. Well, both of us were disappointed after Copenhagen, but, but then we worked hard, and finally in Paris we succeeded. And we continue our work together on the Green Transition. And recently, Mr. President, you swept the White House in the rainbow colors, being the first country on Earth to allow same-sex partnership. Denmark admires and supports your fight for diversity and equal rights. Nevertheless, your presidency is slowly coming to an end. So Congress will probably try to block most of your initiatives in the time to come. I guess that can be frustrating. Believe me, being leader of a very small minority government, I know that from personal experience. And if I may, uh, allow me to give you a piece of personal advice. When I get too frustrated, I let off steam by cooking. And I can recommend that. And if you do take my advice, I think you could be inspired by the new Nordic cuisine. It already involves uh, edible rarities such as moss, bark, and living ants. <laughs> but maybe you could be helpful in our search for a receipt for lame duck. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, you are a great friend and ally. Soren and I will always be very happy to welcome you and your family in Copenhagen. And Denmark would, as all the Nordic countries, I believe, be honored to receive one of the most inspirational and charming figures in America, along with her husband, of course. <laughs> so, so, dear Michelle, dear uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, let me propose a toast for the strong relations between our nations, the very special cross-Atlantic friendship between U.S. and the Nordic countries, countries to friendship. Skål. Cheers.